What's going on? Welcome to episode 19 of the Hike Files podcast. I'm your host, Kurt Zitzelman, and this week I'm going to talk about suggestions to make your hike more enjoyable. I don't like doing top 10 lists or trying to tell you what's right and what's wrong. Everything is up to the the eye of the beholder in this manner of speaking. But these are 10 things that I think are very important to carry with you, to have with you, to use when you're on the trail, whether you're just starting day hiking or if you're backpacking. Spring is just sprung, right? Just a couple days ago. So more people are going to be getting on a trail and maybe this is your first year. Maybe this is the year you've got it in your head. I'm going to start hiking. I'm going to start backpacking. I'm going to get outside more. And if you got questions, maybe these 10 things will help with that. So these are in no particular order. Just going to, I have them written down here. Just going to put them out there the way that I wrote them down. So the first one, footwear. This seems like it should be pretty obvious that you should have shoes on when you're hiking. And there is something to be said for shoes doing more damage to your feet than helping. That's a, a point of view some people have. But you should have a good shoe. It doesn't have to be a, a $400 shoe, but a good sturdy shoe. I have seen people on the trail actually wearing flip-flops. That's not what they were designed for. They're, it's not a good design for hiking. You want something with good side stability, good vertical stability. Right, is that, the, yeah, vertical stability. I use camp shoes when I'm backpacking. And they're usually a lot flimsier than my hiking shoes. They're either like my water shoes or a pair of slippers that have a, a, more of a sole, but they don't have a lot of uh, lateral stability. That was the word I was looking for. They have a lot of lateral stability. And it, it, the slightest uneven spot in camp, if I'm not paying attention and I'm wearing my camp shoes, I can feel my feet wanting to slide through the edges of the shoe, through the sides, because they're just not designed for that kind of a terrain. And when you're, when you do that over a distance, you're going to, you're going to tear your feet up. So it could be something as simple as sneakers, even Converse All-Stars would work better than something like flip-flops. They do make hiking sandals. So if you really want to have that open shoe feel, you can find those, but they usually have more of a thicker, more supportive sides to them that keep your feet in or on the sandal. So don't run around in flip-flops. And also, not just the more sturdy shoes, but you want to check them and make sure that they're in good condition as well. Most hiking shoes will allow you to change out the insoles. I usually swap mine out for insoles made by a company called Superfeet. That's not any kind of endorsement. It's just I prefer them. They last a good long time. And I have had the factory insoles in a pair of hiking shoes just fail on a three-day trip. And by the time I got done with the trip, my feet were bleeding. The last day was horrible. It took me forever to get back to the car, even though I had eight miles. Everybody else in the group was waiting for me. It was just bad. I couldn't walk for a couple of days after the trip. I didn't expect them, and they shouldn't have failed that soon, but I should have checked them. That was my bad. Didn't take away from how good, how good or how fun the trip was, but I was not a happy camper at the end of that. So definitely footwear very important. Also, along with footwear, in the same kind of uh, genre there, socks. I always tell people try to steer away from cotton when you're dealing with outdoors. Your socks can get wet just from sweat or if you're walking through puddles. I don't think I own a pair of cotton socks anymore. I think they're all wool, summer, winter, all wool socks. They Synthetics work well too, but the wool socks, they're very comfortable. They dry fast, and even if it's colder out and your feet get wet, it, they will still keep your feet warm. So shoes, good socks, keep your feet happy because feet are very important when you're hiking. The next thing would be a backpack. And another item that you would just assume would make sense, even on day hikes, unless it's a super, super short hike, more like a walking path at a park, I probably have a backpack with me. Sometimes I have very little in it. And a lot of the other things on this list I'm going to talk about are things that would go in that backpack, even for a day hike. But even if you just want to carry the backpack so that 
you can take your jacket off or your hoodie or whatever and have somewhere to store it, it's still a good thing to have. There's other things you're going to want to put in there, of course. But I've seen people carry no backpacks, be miles and miles into a trip with miles and miles to go, and all of a sudden they're hungry or thirsty or whatever, and they don't have anything because they just left with nothing. A backpack, you can have all the stuff in there. And onto some of those things that we'd put in a backpack. So next would be water and or water treatment. I always have a bottle up. I always carry a bottle of water with me when I'm out hiking and having the backpack. So you can either have it in the pack or you're like on the strap. If you've got like a water bottle holder or something like that. Very important to have. You got to gauge where you're going, how much you drink and how much you could bring with you on bigger trips where I know I may not have um, really reliable water. I'll bring way more water and carry it than rely on filtering because if I know that there's not going to be a lot of water crossings or the water is not um, drinkable, even if you filter it, and it's not always the case. So you got to watch very, very closely. So next up would be water or water treatment. And I always carry a bottle with me in the winter. It's usually a hard side bottle in the summer. I've been recently carrying my Catadine Bee Free which is a, a water filter system. So it's like a soft sided bottle, like flask and cap where you drink from has a filter built into it. So you can just use that one bottle to scoop up the water and filter it as you drink it, which is very handy. But I have at least the one bottle. Longer trips, I'll carry, you know, two liters of water with me. If I know that there may be questionable water, I'll carry three bottles with me, three full liters. And if it turns out that there's more water available than I thought, then I just, as I drink the water, I just don't refill one or two of those bottles until I think I'm going to need to carry water for a distance. It's better to have that capacity and not need it than need it and not have it, right? That's how that always goes. Water treatment in form of a filter or tablets or drops very, very important as well. So if you don't want to carry a lot of extra water with you, you should at least have a filter or drops. Keep in mind, most water drops or water tablets require at least 30 minutes to treat the water. Water filters don't take that long. You just filter water through and then you drink it. When people ask me what my opinion on water filters are or what they should get, I always tell them you can't go wrong with anything Sawyer. Again, this isn't a, a promotion for them. It's just a product that I've used for years and years and over a decade now and never had a problem with them unless it was my own fault. And like, I just ran it. So it was still so dirty and I didn't clean it. I've never had a problem with them. They're great filters. They're bomb proof. They're right in line price wise with the rest of them around $25. I can carry mine in the winter four seasons in the winter. I do keep it in a plastic bag and keep it in my pocket. So it keeps it from freezing. But yeah, they just, they work. They might not have the best flow rate, but you know, it's going to filter the water for you. And usually they come with at least one water collection bag. They might not be the best, but you get a bag with that too. The other filter that I really like, and I would suggest to people is the Catadine Bee Free. I got the one liter bottle option when I got mine. And that takes the place of my hard side bottle that I carry the rest of the year. So in the summer, I've, I'm going to, I carry that in the summer, I carry that catadine with me and that has the filter built into the cap. So you just dunk that in water, put the cap back on and you can just filter as you drink, or you can use that to filter into another cup. Or if you got another bottle, you can filter that way. So it's got multiple uses. I know platypus makes a pretty good one now. And there's another one that's, I, I can't think of off the top of my head, but they're decent filters. They all run around the same price. I would stay away from anything that's like a no name knockoff brand from like Amazon or Walmart that I, you can't really verify the quality of them. You know, the, the name brand you never heard of, but the Sawyer, the Catadine, the Platypus, excellent filters for water drops. I, I think right now what I'm carrying in my first aid kit are aqua mirror drops. And those are a two part solution. So you put a couple drops of the one and a couple drops of the other. 
it mixes in the water and kills anything. Again, that takes 30 minutes, and then the water's safe to drink. And usually they don't add a weird taste, but some of them, you can taste the drops in the water. Now, some of them, the second part is just to take the taste out of it. So you, you'll put the one drop in, let it sit for 30 minutes, and then right before you drink it, you put the second drop in, you, you shake it up, you let it sit for a few minutes, and it takes any of the flavor out, any of the, the weird taste out of it. Uh, the Aqua Mira, though, I don't think has any kind of residual taste. But some people concern themselves with the weight of a filter or of carrying a, a heavier duty, heavy duty bottle, like a Nalgene or something like that. The way I look at it is water is going to keep me alive. So if I got to carry a few extra ounces to make sure that I can make it through the trail, then those are ounces I gladly carry. The next thing on the list, kind of related, food and snacks. A lot of times I'll see people on a trail and they didn't bring anything to eat. Even if it's just something like a cliff bar, I'm guilty doing it myself. I've gotten out on the trail thinking I was just going to be out for a couple minutes and I just wind up wandering around for a while and I'm like, oh, this is way further than I thought. Now I'm starving. It's, if you're on like a short day hike, it's inconvenient. If you're out on a longer hike, it can be really miserable. And the reason why it's such a good idea to get in the habit of taking something is just in case, just in case you make a wrong turn, just in case you hurt yourself. Just in case anything happens and you're out there longer than you thought, I might only be out there, you think I might only be out there for 20 minutes and then something happens and you're out there for hours and you really would rather have food with you. Even if it's just cliff bars, beef jerky, I'm not saying you got to carry a four course meal with you, but you could, you could carry dehydrated food with you. I'll also use food stops as a rest period, especially when I'm backpacking, because I'll have a tendency to just keep going. In my head, it never seems like I'm going fast enough when I'm backpacking. So I'll, I'll be hiking, 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 and know I got to stop for food. And it's big, oh, I can make it another mile. I'll go another 15 minutes. And then I just keep on pushing myself. So I've gotten better into the habit of bringing meals, especially for lunch, where I'll be eating on the trail. Once you're in camp, you're at camp, but I'll force myself to take a meal for lunch that I have to either cook or I've got to do some kind of prep. So I got to stop. I got to open up the bear canister. I got to get my food out. I got to prep it, eat it. And it just forces me to take a little bit of a breather, which in the long run, yes, it refuels me with the food, but it also prolongs my day in a good way, allows me to go further without really wrecking my body by taking that break. So that's also important as well. Eating on the run is great, but you're not really getting the break that you need while you're eating that food. The next thing would be first aid. First aid, a subjective thing. There's no right or wrong first aid kit to carry. Keep in mind that most of the stuff that you carry in your first aid kit really isn't meant for you, but it's meant for the people around you, either people you're hiking with or people you may come across on the trail. I've been the beneficiary of this myself where I got hurt and I never even touched my first aid kit, but everybody else used theirs. If you're not going to carry it for yourself, carry it for someone that you might come across. And you can, like I said, there's no right or wrong first aid kit. So you can carry band-aids and, and bandages. Some people carry ibuprofen with them or something like that. One handy thing to carry is Benadryl, especially if you live in an area where there may be poisonous snakes. Not saying that you should just go skipping through the, not saying that you should just go skipping through the woods without a care in the world because you've got Benadryl with you. But if you get bit by a poisonous snake, Benadryl, may be the thing that allows you to get out of the forest and go get help. Allergy medications, anything like that. I don't really carry anything like a splint. I'll carry a like an ace bandage in mine. I think I, got, I, think I still have my small ace bandage in there. And you could always make a splint out of branches or something like that. 
there's some of those, you know, some stuff like that's around. It may not be the cleanest thing, but if you just need something to hold, that will work. But you got to decide for yourself what you want to carry. Everybody's first aid kit is a little bit different. If you wind up hiking with a lot of the same people, you'll know what somebody else is carrying. And you're like, well, I don't need to carry that because I know they got it. And I'll carry this instead. And then, you know, you can do things like that. One of the really important things as a first aid isn't important enough, but a map or a compass, you should always carry a map with you. Even if it's just a digital map, I would say a digital map only if it's somewhere that you are fairly familiar with and you just need the map for reference. If it's somewhere that you've never been before and you're heading to, there's very few places in the, at least in the U S I know of, I can even think of that. There's not some kind of map online. And if you've never been there before, I would highly suggest you at least download a basic map and print it up from home before you get there, just in case they don't have a paper map, download the digital map, grab a paper map maps will save your life. They may, they don't even have to be all that accurate but they'll absolutely make sure you stay in the right direction. A compass, I carry a small compass with me most times. I, I've gotten out of the habit of carrying it and I should get back into the habit of doing that. But a compass, if you're not fam familiar with how compasses work with a map, check with a local state park. A lot of times they will have courses on it. And if you just need a, a like a crash course, I can guarantee you most rangers would rather spend a couple of minutes to give you a crash course on how to use a compass than spend hours looking for you in the forest, trying to rescue you. So don't be afraid to use those resources. You can take courses that will teach you like absolutely how to use a compass and orient, do orienteering and find your way with nothing but a compass. And if you want to go that far, then more power to you. It's a great skill to have, but don't, count on your phone to get you out of a situation. Don't count on your phone having a compass to get you out of the situation. Even if you download one, phones break, batteries die, things can happen. A compass, unless you really smash, you know, if you got a good compass, if you have even a decent compass, it's going to be really hard to break. And they, there's no batteries, nothing like that. So unless the Earth's mag magnetic field goes crazy. You should be okay with a compass. So definitely something worth having. Next thing is not absolutely necessary for most people, but it's trekking poles. So I will carry trekking poles with me a lot of times, but most times I don't take them out of my bag. If I'm just day hiking, they, my poles have been on so many day hikes that they've never come out of my bag. It's not even funny, but they're for just in case. Just in case I hurt myself, I sprain a, an ankle or something like that, they could help me get back to the car. For me, I use them for descents, especially when I'm backpacking. A lot of weight in my back, long descents. I did cable for 18 years, climbing ladders, going into attics, into crawl spaces, under houses, into tight spots, under desks behind furniture, my knees are the first thing to start bothering me, especially, in long, especially on long descents when I'm carrying weight like a backpack for like a trip, like a multi-day trip. So when I've got a long descent, out come the poles and I use them to help moderate my speed and take some of that weight off my knees. If I'm doing a solo trip, I'll usually use my poles just because if there's nobody else around, you don't want to fall and hurt yourself, even if there are people around, but there's more of a chance of you laying there longer. If, especially on the trails, I like to do that are way more remote. Uh, so those trekking poles, just, they're just added safety that I'm going to be able to finish the trip without a problem. I also use them for my shelter. So when I'm using a hammock for my tarp, I will use them to support my tarp. I also have a trekking pole tent that needs a trekking pole in order to stay up. So I carry them with me when I'm backpacking all the time. 90% of the time I take them with me when I'm day hiking, unless 
I know I'm just going somewhere that's got a like a nice flat trail. If I know the trail and I know there's really no terrain to it, then I might not take them. The next thing would be for comfort or shelter. And this may not sound important when you're doing a day hike, but just carrying something like a sit pad or a, like a folding backpacking chair or a tripod, a, a day hammock or a hammock chair, something like that. You'd be amazed when, how much time you can lose in the woods when you got somewhere comfortable to sit. And I mean, lose in the woods. I, I mean, lose time in the woods in a good way. I've done a one mile round trip hike and just walked out to a spot where there's a creek set up my little day hammock and just chilled out for hours and just lost track of the day. You know, sometimes hiking isn't about doing the miles. Sometimes it's about just getting to a spot that you like. And if you got somewhere to sit, it's, it just makes it that much better. Especially if you're going to look back at the food and the snacks and the water and the water filtering. Sometimes just having a spot to sit down and do that, it makes all the difference in the world. It's just a little comfort that makes it that much better. Now, I like carrying a day hammock. So a short, when I say day hammock, a, a hammock without a net that's smaller, like nine feet usually. Uh, the day hammock I, I generally carry is just a nine foot netless hammock. And if I had to, I could sleep in it. And I have just to see if I could. What I also do sometimes, and I should probably do it more, is I have a very small tarp that barely fits over my smaller camping hammocks. Sometimes I'll throw that in my backpack as well. And if, it's, if it starts raining, the weather turns, or if it's really hot and sunny and I just want a spot to hide under the shade, I'll set up the hammock and I'll put the tarp up. And I'll just hang out for a little bit. You're not really camping. You're not staying there overnight. But it'll give you just a little bit of just a little bit of shelter, and sometimes that's all you need. The next thing would be a headlamp or a flashlight of some kind. I am horrible at doing this, and even when I'm when I think I'm being good about it, I have actually forgotten my headlamp. It's easy to do when you have a phone because you just figure, well, my phone's got a flashlight. I'll just use that. It's not always an option. They're not always great. Especially, you don't want to be holding your phone up in front of you. And by the time it gets dark, you may have drained your phone down to the point where your battery won't last to get you out. So carrying a small headlamp with you is always a good thing. Or a small flashlight, something that you can use in an emergency. If something happens, you get turned around and lost, or you, you get hurt, or you get ill. You get sick or you're just sitting, you have your hammock with you and you take a nap and you wake up and it's dark. Oh crap. Now I gotta get out. Having a, a headlamp or a flashlight is important at that point. Also, if you do wind up getting hurt and you call for help and they can't get there right away and it's dark by the time they get to you, that light will help them find you. And the last thing is bug in more importantly, tick protection. So I would say that of all these things, this may be one of the most important, especially in like the Northeast. We've got a lot of ticks. We did not have a good winter this year. The ground didn't freeze. We didn't have a lot of snow in a lot of places. So that usually kills off a lot of ticks. And since we didn't have that kind of winter, I'm guessing we're going to have a really tick heavy year. And I, that when people ask me what animal I am most afraid of in the woods, it's ticks. Those little buggers, they could all disappear. I would be okay with it. So some of the best ways you can help protect yourself from ticks. Permethrin. There is branded permethrin and you can just get, I think you can go to like tractor supply, maybe even Home Depot maybe, and just get like generic permethrin. It comes in usually like a big, jug or in a spray bottle if you get the unbranded you usually have to dilute it yourself but you can mix it up in like a in your bathtub and just dunk your clothes in it it does a great job at protecting you from ticks you treat your clothes with it not yourself and do not treat 
undergarments with it. But you can do your pants, you can do your socks, you can do your shirts, hats. I know people who treat their tents and hammocks and quilts and things like that with the permethrin. And it does a great job at keeping away ticks and killing ticks. And it will last for five to six months or so many washes. So when you, if you've ever watched any of my backpacking videos on YouTube, you may notice that a lot of times I'm wearing the same clothes. It's not because I think it's a uniform. It's not because I'm trying to stay in character. It's because that's the stuff I treat. And that stuff is treated with permethrin. It has been for years. I treat it twice a summer. This year, I might wind up doing it three times because it's spring is here early. So I got to treat my hiking clothes with the permethrin. And so I'll probably have to do it a couple times. But it's great for your clothes. But don't stop there. I've also started using what's called Picaridin. And there, I think there's a couple different brands of that as well. It comes in a couple different formats. Formats, styles, formats, solutions, <laughs> recipes. I don't know. Sometimes it's a spray. Sometimes it's like a cream. But that you put on your skin. And it will, it'll protect you for like 18 to 24 hours. And that's made out of more natural stuff. You could use DEET as well. Test DEET first though. Some people have reactions to DEET. And if you're, if you get that on your clothes or if you wear a watch, it can actually melt plastic. So be real careful with DEET. Uh, make sure it's okay with you. you're okay with it, and make sure it doesn't have a weird reaction to anything you might wear. The picaridin doesn't have that problem. You put that on your skin, and you, with one of those two things, with either DEET or picaridin and permethrin on your clothes, you're pretty well protected. But anything you can get, even if it's off or skin so soft, anything like that is better than nothing. I don't really like treating myself with chemicals. I really don't. But tick bites can be way, way worse, way, way faster. And they can mess you up for a long, long time, if not forever. So they're not anything to really mess with. Another way to help keep yourself protected is very rarely anymore, especially when I'm backpacking, because I do tend to like the more remote trails so they're not as heavily used which means they're probably more overgrown so very rarely will i wear shorts when i'm backpacking and again if you've watched any of my videos you've watched summer trips if you can see my like the lower half of my body on camera a lot of times you'll see my pants tucked into my socks and i'll wear uh like neoprene uh socks like um seal skins waterproof socks and I do that, you know, see, you know, the first thing I talked about with footwear and keeping your feet happy, with footwear and keeping your feet happy, I'd rather wear neoprene socks and not have to worry about just having to blast across a creek. I don't care if my shoes get wet, especially in the summer, I don't care if my shoes get wet, but if I can keep my feet as dry as possible, then it keeps them as happy as possible. So the... Seal skins I wear are come almost all the way up to my knee and then I'll tuck my pants in because I wear like um, a very light summer hiking pant. So it's, it doesn't really, it, it's a little bit warmer than wearing shorts, obviously, but the protection that you get from that is a lot better. So I'll tuck my socks, tuck my pants into my socks. They'll be permethrin. I'll be picker ridden. And sometimes I, I don't like putting a picaridin on my face, right on my face. So I'll usually use a skin so soft or something like that to spray my face just so I'm covered. If you don't want to do that with tucking your pants in your socks, you can also get like summer hiking gaiters, which will cover the cuffs of your pants so nothing can crawl up your leg. Like I said, ticks are the thing that I'm most concerned about in the woods. And then, of course, there's other bugs you're keeping away, mosquitoes and flies and all that stuff. But these things only do so much. Even with the picaridin and the permethrin or the DEET and the off and skin so soft and your pants tucked in and all that stuff, you can still wind up with ticks on you. So 
always check. I stop every once in a while, especially if I go through any kind of scruffy area, I stop and I just do a real quick check and make sure there's nothing anywhere that may have touched the brush. I just check my pants real quick and just to be on the safe side. In some areas you want to have a long sleeve shirt and like a bug net for your head up in Vermont and in, in New England, they get those little black flies and those things, they do not care about picker ridden, DEET, off, permethrin, flamethrowers, nothing. They don't care about none of it. They will come right after you. So the best thing you can do is just cover yourself up. So long sleeve pants, long sleeve, long leg pants, long sleeve shirt, bug net over your head. Got some light gloves, put those things on too. They will eat you up. <laughs> those things are a pain, big old pain. And that's the end of my list. What would you add if you... What would you add to that list for people who are new, who may be looking for suggestions of things to make their hike more enjoyable? And I, I say more enjoyable, not right or wrong, because that's not what the outdoors is about. I see that too much in videos where their thumbnails just have wrong and useless, just, just all the negative crap. Look, go out and enjoy the outdoors. Maybe some of these things will help you. And if you're listening and you've got some other options, let me know. You can email me at hike.files at gmail.com. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave a comment down in the comments below. In the com leave a comment in the comments. Leave a comment down below. And let me know if there's something else that you think should be on this list. And other people can see it too. That's going to do it for me. I'm working on some, some ideas for some upcoming episodes. So they should be fun. I want to start talking to some people. That's going to do it for me for this week. I hope this was helpful for you. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I will see you in the next.